Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have The Fire. This is a photo that comes to us from 2003 at the Station nightclub in Rhode Island, and it shows the band Great White as they perform. While this seems like just a regular photo that someone took on their Motorola Razor, what ensued shortly after this photo was taken is absolutely tragic. Basically, as the band performed, there were some pyrotechnics that were set off, and while this was meant to be a spectacular display, it only ended up in disaster. The fireworks ended up setting all of the flammable acoustic foam in the walls and ceiling on fire, and within one minute, everything that was combustible was up in flames. Within two minutes, the entire club was fully engulfed in black smoke, and people were having trouble finding exits. In the end, this fire took the lives of 100 people, and another 230 were injured as a result. It has gone down in US history as one of the worst and most deadly nightclub fires. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft craft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting, and the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now apparently he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our 7th spot we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year, another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway, that's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past, a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms, and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot, we have Stephen Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights, and I quote, First one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. 
the pilot, Ken Collins, was fine but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51 taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number 3, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956 and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Salem UFO. On the morning of July 16th, 1952, this photo was captured by Shell Alpert and has stumped people ever since. The photo shows four unidentified objects hovering in the air above Salem, Massachusetts, and was taken at the Salem Coast Guard Air Station. The objects seem to be above the Winter Island and Cat Cove areas, but the really isn't much more that is known about this strange incident. There are a few theories regarding this photo. One is a camera glitch, others think it may just be light reflecting off of the window that the photo was taken through, but of course there are people who point to similar incidents that happened in the 1950s and of course believe it is proof of extraterrestrial beings. It is very likely we may never know exactly what's going on here, but the air of mystery it leaves is definitely kind of cool. In our number 9 spot today we have the core. This photo shows a physicist named Harold Agnew, and while this looks like a relatively normal, non-threatening photo, what he has in his hand is truly devastating. Harold is holding the nuclear core of what was nicknamed the Fat Man Atomic Bomb. This means that Harold is holding the nuclear core of the atomic bomb that was later dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. The immediate blast of course took many lives, but so did the long-term effects of the bomb like radiation illnesses and that sort of thing. It's crazy to look at a photo like this because it seems so perfectly normal when he literally has a life-changing, world-ending device in the palm of his hand. Also, I don't think I could ever hold something like that. Not only would I just not want to, but I don't think I could even get near it for fear of something going wrong. In our number 8 spot today, we have the eruption. This is a photo that is showing Mount Pinatubo, which is located in the Philippines on June 15, 1991. That is the day that this volcano erupted into what would be the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. Certainly impressive, also extremely 
extremely terrifying. This photo shows the pyroclastic flow full of hot gas and rock being flung into the air. Eruptive activity in the volcano first started on April 2nd of that year, which prompted researchers to set up seismographs in the area. By June, the volcano was having a group of progressively shallower eruptions before, on June 12th, the volcano had its first spectacular eruption, which sent an ash column 19 kilometers up into the atmosphere. Additional smaller explosions continued on June 13th, which then led to some intense seismic activity. After more highly gas charged magma reached the surface, on June 15th, the volcano once again exploded, this time sending the cloud of ash 40 kilometers up into the atmosphere. Volcanic ash and pumice blanketed the surrounding areas, and pyroclastic flows filled what were once deep valleys with fresh volcanic deposits. It is truly magnificent and extremely powerful, and this photo shows just that. In our number 7 spot today, we have post war. This is a photo that is said to have been taken in 1946, just after the end of the Second World War. Story goes that the person in this photo is a soldier who had just returned home from war, which would already be difficult and challenging enough, but as he returned home, he came to hear the news that unfortunately, despite his survival, his family had lost their lives during the war. There is no doubt about the impact that either world war had on the world, and how the impact doesn't stop once the war is over. These wars changed the course of history, and they changed people's lives forever. This is definitely a difficult photo to look at, and it's an eerie reminder of those dark times. In our number 6 spot today, we have the disguise. Speaking of the second world war, as it began to come to a close, many of the Germans who were involved in all of the many, many violations of human rights began to flee or try and hide or disguise themselves for fear of being persecuted. One of those was, of course, the worst of them all, Hitler himself. This photo, or rather series of photos, was created by the US government as an attempt to document the many ways that he could have disguised himself in order to escape being recognized and captured. At the time, the fear of him being able to escape responsibility and go on living his life abroad was very real. I mean, there have been others who actually did manage to do just that, and that is exactly the reason for these photos. There is also something kind of interesting and bizarre about what happens when we take away the features of his that we know him by. In the end, he didn't escape and go on to live abroad, but he did escape being held responsible before the world. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Titanic. We all know the story of the Titanic. I mean, it's one of the most famous in history, and this photo comes from just before the historic iceberg encounter. On April 10th, 1912, the Titanic set sail on its maiden voyage, heading from Southampton over to New York City. The ship took a couple of stops along the way, one in France, one in Ireland, before setting off for the United States officially, and somewhere along the beginning part of its journey, someone was able to snap a photo of the ship as it sailed. It's not clear exactly where this photo was taken, but it is thought to be the last photo taken of the ship before its tragic end. Considering it was only four days after the ship set sail that it hit the iceberg, it is likely that this photo came not too long before the terrible day. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Lipstick Killer. This is a photo that comes to us from December 10th, 1945. If looking at this image gives you a shudder down your spine, that absolutely makes sense, as it was written by a terrible person known as the Lipstick Killer. This photo is an image of a note he left written on the wall at one of his crime scenes. The photo comes from the apartment of Francis Brown, as just before he wrote this message, he took her life. After this message was left, he ended up taking the life of one other person because he was finally caught by the police six months later. The message scrawled in the photo reads, For heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more, I cannot control myself. It is an absolutely chilling note with a horrific backstory. In our number 3 spot today, we have bad politics. This is a photo that shows the former first lady, Rosalind Carter, and you may or may not be wondering who that man next to her is. And to that I say, my friends, that is the horrible, horrible monster that is John Wayne Gacy, aka the Killer Clown. This photo was taken at a Polish Constitution Day celebration in Chicago in 1978, which is the same year that Gacy was arrested for his crimes, so at the point this photo was taken, he had already taken the lives of at least 20 people. The reason he was there and was able to meet the First Lady is because he was not only the worst of the worst, he also somehow became the Democratic Precinct Captain in the Chicago suburbs in the 1970s, and he was the Marshal of the Polish Parade. The picture is even signed, quote, to John Gacy, best wishes, Rosalind Carter. It's terrible. I hate it so much. I feel very bad for anyone who had to meet him. In our number 2 spot today, we have the first day. This is a photo that shows Dorothy Count Scoggins as she joined her new school. What should be a perfectly normal activity was certainly anything but 
for Dorothy as she was the first black person to attend Harding High School in Charlotte, North Carolina, which was previously an all-white school. After the passing of the Purcell Plan in 1956, there were 40 students who applied for transfers, and Dorothy was one of four who was accepted. This photo clearly shows that although small steps were being taken within the law to prevent segregation, there were no steps being taken within the students. As Dorothy just tries to get an education, you can see her peers clearly trying to disturb her peace. After four days of this kind of treatment, Dorothy's parents ended up withdrawing her from the school over fears for her safety. These images, however, were seen around the world. This photo acts as quite the reminder for where we were really not all that long ago. In our number one spot today, we have the Challenger crew. This is a photo that was taken of the clearly very excited Challenger crew as they walked down the ramp ready to head off on their mission. The crew even included 37-year-old Krista McAuliffe, who was a high school social studies teacher. She had won a spot on this mission through a program with NASA called the Teacher in Space Program, and she had trained diligently for months in order to be the first non-military person in space. On January 28, 1986, the Challenger mission proved to be fateful just 73 seconds after liftoff. Two rubber O-rings failed because of the cold temperatures of the morning, and on live television, the world watched as the spacecraft broke apart and plunged into the ocean, sadly taking the lives of everyone on board. It is an absolutely tragic event, made even more chilling by this final photo. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. In our number 9 spot today, we have the frozen man of Mount Everest. This photo comes from 1996 and it shows Beck Weathers getting treated after the Mount Everest disaster. The Mount Everest disaster took place on May 10th and 11th in 1996, where there was a blizzard on the mountain that ended up stranding and taking the lives of eight people who were aiming to descend the mountain. Beck was a part of the team who was climbing the mountain on this fateful day and he ended up suffering from snow blindness during the climb. He actually fell into a hypothermic coma because it was so cold and he suffered suffered severe frostbite on his face, hands, and feet. Pretty miraculously, he not only survived, but ended up walking back down to camp in order to get help, where he was then taken by helicopter to receive treatment. He ended up needing his hands, parts of his feet, and even his nose amputated, but he survived this whole ordeal, and that is the most important thing. In our number eight spot today, we have the reflecting pool. This is one of the creepiest or most chilling images ever taken. It depicts a young girl in a graveyard who is looking down at a reflection in a pond. Okay, maybe a little eerie, but not exactly chilling. What makes this photo what it is, however, is that there are seemingly two reflections looking back up at this little girl. No one knows who this girl is, where she is, or even when this photo was taken, but it is estimated to have come from somewhere around the early 1900s. This photo was analyzed, and it has been said that it is unaltered or edited. Who knows how this photo was possible? Maybe there was some sort of invisible entity standing beside her that we could only see the reflection of? Like, a reverse vampire or something. In our number seven spot today, we have the elephant's foot. This photo looks like it's just a big lump of nothing, but it is called an elephant's foot. No, it's of course not a real elephant's foot, and instead is just called that because of its appearance. This lump was actually created from the Chernobyl nuclear meltdown, and it is just a mass of corium and other materials that were in the core of the reactor. This elephant's foot was located in the steam distribution corridor, which is under what's left of the reactor. While this mass doesn't produce as much radiation as it did before, it it does still produce a deadly amount even today. Like, so much so that just a few minutes of being around it is enough to get a lethal dose of radiation. It's kind of crazy that even though they knew this, they were still standing there taking pictures of it. For a long time, the severity of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster was being kept a secret from the public and those who it mattered to the most. Photos like these only give us a glimpse into this horrible disaster and how things went down. 
In our number 6 spot today we have the penitentiary. This photo comes from what is left of the Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. This prison used to be the most famous and the most expensive in the world, but now this is the sort of thing that is left of it. This prison is actually now used as a tourist attraction and it becomes a haunted house during Halloween. The prison used to house some pretty high profile prisoners such as Scarface himself, Al Capone. The prison was opened in 1829 and was known for its advanced technology for the time. They had things like central heating, flush toilets, and shower baths in each cell. These were all considered luxuries in 1829. The first prisoner to be held there was Charles Williams who was facing a two year sentence for theft. When he arrived at the prison he had a hood over his head so as to protect his identity, but also so that he wouldn't know what the rest of the prison looked like so he would never be able to plan an escape. While prison is never good, the craziest thing about this specific one is that all of the prisoners lived in isolation. I can't even imagine what that would be like, especially for the people who found themselves there for a long period of time. This photo is just a truly haunting reminder of all that once went on in this prison. In our number 5 spot today we have the Stanford Prison Experiment. This photo comes from 1971 during the Stanford Prison Experiment. For those of you who aren't familiar with this experiment, it started on August 14th, 1971 and was led by university psychology professor Philip Zimbardo. The experiment took student volunteers and divided them into two groups, one group of prisoners and one group of guards, and they placed all of the volunteers into a fake prison that was created for this experiment. Experiment. The experiment aimed to see if and how quickly humans would turn evil under the right conditions with the right amount of power. Basically it was a test to try and answer the question of if humans are inherently good or inherently evil. I think everyone was pretty shocked with the results. After just 6 days the experiment needed to be concluded because the guards began absolutely tormenting the prisoners. It really showed the kinds of things humans can be capable of even after a short time. This photo is definitely reminiscent of that experiment and it serves as our reminder. In our number 4 spot today we have the acid drum. This photo comes to us from the inside of a house of one of the most terrible people, the serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. This photo was taken from the inside of his home after he was found and caught by authorities. Before his arrest, he was sadly able to take the lives of 17 people. Although this photo might look kind of plain, the horrors are plentiful. This shot shows a full drum of acid that was located inside of his home. I probably don't need to tell you what it was used for because who has a full drum of acid inside of their home? especially when you're a serial killer. I can't imagine the horrors investigators saw when they entered his home and even previous to that as they investigated his crimes. Thankfully Jeffrey was caught and in 1992 he was sentenced to life in prison but just two years later he was killed by a fellow prison inmate. In our number 3 spot today we have the gadget. This photo shows the first ever atomic bomb and it comes to us from 1945. Called the gadget, this bomb was an implosion plutonium device that was detonated in the Trinity test in 1945. This photo shows someone sitting next to it, so casually like it's a stuffed animal and not like it's a world changing device. The Trinity test was the very first time a nuclear weapon was detonated and the gadget was actually of the same design as the bomb that was later detonated over Nagasaki, Japan. Japan on August 9th, 1945. There is a very eerie nature about this photo and the seemingly casual behavior of the man next to it. Did he know what this was about to unleash? Perhaps not, but more eerily, maybe he did. In our number 2 spot today we have change. This photo was taken by Fred Blackwell on May 28th, 1963 and is actually showing us a moment of protest. The three sitting at the counter are Joan Trompour, Anne Moody and their sociology teacher John Salter. The reason why this photo is so important is because these three are sitting at a quote white only counter at Woolworth's 5 and Dime store in Jackson, Mississippi while being attacked by an angry mob. People are throwing condiments at them and I'm sure saying some pretty nasty things. The two students went to Tougaloo College, which was a black college that ended up being at the core of the civil rights movement in Mississippi. It's amazing to see how brave they are and a photo like this is really such an important message for us to remember today. In our number 1 spot today we have Bikini Island. Bikini in the Marshall Islands was once inhabited by around 170 islanders until 1945 rolled around. The US president at the time, Harry Truman, ordered that the military continue to test nuclear weapons just in case they were
were needed in the future since this was shortly after the end of World War II. Unfortunately, Bikini was the place that was chosen to be the testing site since all planes and ships traveled on routes that weren't close to the area. The residents of the island were asked to vacate, quote, for the good of mankind and to end all world wars, to which they of course obliged under the impression that they would one day be able to move back. Test weapons were detonated on the reef itself, on the sea, in the air, and underwater, and this photo shows what was happening during just one of these tests, and it wasn't even the largest one. Although the former residents of Bikini were promised that they would one day be able to return home, the island still remains uninhabited because of the mass amounts of radiation that still exist here. Mm -hmm.